Hey, it is some day in December. I December guess. 8th. Oh, it's December 8th. It's a good thing Megan's here to know things. Happy day after Pearl Harbor Day. That's awkward. <laughs> we are going to review a Netflix original Christmas movie that we watched called The Christmas Prince. Uh, so it is a pretty uh, well-hidden secret that Megan and I like Christmas movies, especially like terrible ABC Family style Christmas movies. And it turns out that Netflix delivered a Netflix original Which ABC Family style just... Christmas movie. Yeah, it's everything we wanted. I was so pleased, and I was like, hey Mallory, you want to watch A Christmas Prince? And she was like, I don't know what that is. And I was like, yes you do, it's that Netflix original bad Christmas movie. And she was like, yes, I want to watch that right now. That's pretty much exactly how it went down. Uh, so basic plot, there is a young, striving journalist who for some reason is a copy editor because that's the step to become a journalist. And her name is Amber Moore. And she's played by the actress who in iZombie plays Liv Moore. Yeah, okay. That and was I was strange. like, Moore? <laughs> more, more, more? more? Uh, listen, it helps her get into character. I have no idea. Uh, so she, out of the blue, gets an assignment because when you're in charge of a magazine, you give assignments to your copy editors. Because it was over the course of Christmas and no one else wanted to do it. And yeah. she knew that the junior copy editor wanted to be a journalist. But, like, if you want to be a journalist, you don't go through the copy editor, yeah. editor. It's like, it's really a different chain of... Chain. Anyway, she gets this assignment to go to a castle in a fictional country. Aldovia. Yes. And interview... Like, Genovia, but the worse. The prince-to-be, uh, who, for some reason... So Has the a old beard? king is dead, and the young king uh, is not wanting to take over, or at least the rumor is that he doesn't want to take over. And he's like known to be like a playboy, you so know, he grows, and a philandering prince. He grows a really unattractive beard, so that you can't tell it's him. He hides from the press. He gets there. She goes to the press review, and they're like, "Oh nope, the prince didn't come." And uh, movie over. And then <laughs> the movie is not over, oh, yeah. and she's in the castle, and this butler is like, hi, can I help you? And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. And he was like, oh, you're American. You must be the American tutor for the princess. And she was like, yep, yep, that's me. And that's the premise. She is this, like, tutor, but she doesn't know math. So quickly, the little princess who has spinal bifida, and it's like a plot point, but it's not she like is the, most the point. Adorable. She's adorable. She like I don't know if she actually has spinal bifida. I'd be interested, but like she She's like brilliant. represents the illness quite well, and mm -hmm. like it's like not the point of the movie. Nothing horrible happens to her. Like it's just a thing that's happening, which is interesting, and I liked. Uh, and she quickly is like, "You're not my tutor." Yeah. You don't know anything, but I like you because you treat me like a normal human being. And so also I'm going to cover for you. A true story about the prince. So then it becomes like that classic movie where like she finds out that the prince is not as much of a playboy as everybody thinks. And like, oh my goodness, he's kind of cute and he's kind of sweet. And we're probably going to have a thing, but oh no, he found out that I've been lying. And oh. Wait, wait, wait. But first. Wait, this is really She finds spoilery. out. Spoilers that he's adopted and therefore can't become king anyway. And before he finds out that she's been lying, he finds out he's adopted. And at this point, when he's like about no, no, to find no, out all of this stuff, he finds out all of it at once. Yeah, it's just like brrr, in like one sesh <laughs> while he's being coronated. <laughs> yeah. It just all goes down. Does anyone have any objections? Yes, laundry list of objections. Okay, but there's only like 25 minutes of this movie left, mm -hmm. so like he doesn't have time for a big I need to earn your trust back thing. No, no. Instead, after everything is resolved and he somehow becomes king anyway, which doesn't make any sense and would never happen in real life, but the king made a decree and his seal was on it, mm -hmm. he chases after her on New Year's to propose. Yeah, he's known her real name for a week and then he proposes to her. End of movie. 
It's a great, actually, he gets down on a knee and Meg and I were both like, what? <laughs> I thought it was gonna end with him being like, listen, will you come back to the castle? I really wanna try, like, I really think that we can be good together and I'd like you to come back. And plus, Emily, who is the princess, really misses you. Which he did say, but like, I don't know, at the same time, the uh, antagonist of the film, the nephew of the king, Simon, gets married to some woman, like, who's clearly just marrying him because she thinks he can become king. She's a really, really terrible human. They literally get married, like, all in the same day as they reveal that the prince shouldn't be the king, then they get married after yeah, so whatever like Christmas her butt Eve, leaves. Christmas Eve, they lie to the world. They reveal the truth about the prince. And she leaves. Christmas Day, or like in the morning, they get married. And then he's going to get coronated like minutes later. And then she shows up with the proof that the prince can actually be king. And then he becomes king. And then she still leaves. Well, she leaves in the middle of the coronation. Like he's like getting... She's, she's like, like, bye. Bye. All right, after a brief interruption. So the one thing that I did like is even though the, the plot was like ridiculous and contrived, it had a lot of very good characters, had good acting, and then we really, really liked Emily. The whole budget was spent on costuming. No, that's not true. It was spent on wild animals. Wild animals, <laughs> costuming, probably the actors. So much so that like the set dressing for this coronation <laughs> hall had like twinkling plastic fairy lights. Yeah, and then like these prom. three chairs <laughs> that were supposed to be like the royal thrones, but were literally like chairs you could buy at like TJ Maxx. Yeah, they it it was very they prom were looking. Not ugly chairs, but they weren't like a royal throne. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there was a lot of things that were kind of like that, like, sort of strange, like the kitchen that they made cookies in. <laughs> And like a few of the different times where like they make cookies. She remember Emily talked her into making cookies instead of teaching. That's when she revealed that she knew who she was. I don't remember that at all. Oh, (laughs) yeah, they made sugar cookies. They were rolling them out. Well, apparently I missed a weird kitchen scene. Uh, So, but the character of Emily was one thing that we both really liked. And the really cool thing about her is that she had spina bifida, and often in movies like this, uh, where, like. The, the person who is lying is getting close to somebody. Something happens to that child who was like already weak to begin with. And they made a point earlier about the queen being like, oh no, she be careful, be gentle. And her being like, I'm not a porcelain doll or I'm not a china doll. And I was like, oh no. And then she went sledding, like the tutor and the little girl went sledding. And I was like, they're going to get hurt. Yeah, I was they're so gonna worried. They're going to get hurt. And then as they went down the hill, they toppled off the sled and Amber was like, oh my god, Emily, are you hurt? And Emily was like, ha ha! And I was like, what a good moment. Yeah, it and was then great. the queen was oh, like... Best moment. I saw a butler told me that you guys were out there sledding. And they were all like, oh, I'm so sorry. It won't... Yeah, sorry. Uh, and she was like, next time, you should think about inviting your queen. I know my way around a bobsled. Bless. Bobsled. <laughs> it was great. It was Spy yeah, I Dry. It was just a really, it was a fun movie. And we enjoyed the acting. The storyline was contrived, but in the way that we always really like. I thought that Netflix delivered exactly what it had promised a me. A bad, like, hokey Christmas film. And with that, my cat's about to knock over this tripod. So we'll see you tomorrow.